What's going on, y'all? Micah here, and I'm back with another boxing recap. If you didn't watch the fights last night, this is the video for you. First up, we got Demetrius Andre versus Terrence Nicholson. Wasn't really nothing doing here. Went the whole full distance. Demetrius Andre is definitely hell to fight. He's southpaw. He moves funny. He's kind of unorthodox a little bit. Terrence, Terrence Nicholson's not really a sorry guy. I don't think he's sorry at all, actually. I just think that Demetrius Andre just is so different and moves so weird that it makes it a hard time for pretty much anybody that he fights. Demetrius Andre pretty much, you know, just touched him up, picked him apart the whole fight. Terrence couldn't really get anything off except for a few stiff jabs. I think that if uh, Demetrius goes ahead and fights David Benavidez or Caleb Plant, he will give them issues. He's definitely not getting them out of there because he seems to have a little bit of a power issue. But yeah, I think he win just, just, just based off being unorthodox. Next fight. Next up, we got Rashidi Ellis versus Roman Villa. And this fight actually started off pretty uneventful and uninteresting, but it became probably the most interesting and controversial fight of the night. So first up, the first eight rounds, I would say Rashidi Ellis was putting on a clinic. He looks like how you look when you're feeling great that day in the gym. Nobody can touch you in sparring. The mitts aren't making you tired. The bag's not making you tired. Your footwork is on point. Hand-eye coordination, everything's on point. So he was looking really, he was looking great. I'm sorry. I thought he looked great. They don't call him speedy for nothing. He's very fast. The guy, uh, what's the guy's name? V.I. was... You know, he was he's really not that good to me. He was pretty much just sitting there with his high guard up and getting touched. He was getting beat like the bag for the first eight rounds, not really doing anything. Whenever he punched, Ellis would be out of there. He would dodge and get away. But as time went on, Ellis's high energy performance was coming back to bite. And this is when I think that you're supposed to coast towards the end. You're supposed to just sit there, little jazz to the body, move around. Who cares if people say you're running? If you're trying to win the fight. I think Rashidi Ellis has a power issue as well. But uh, that's pretty much what happened. So basically, like around round nine, Villa was, you know, his persistence paid off. I will say that while he's not that good of a fighter, he does have persistence and he might have a little bit of power and that paid off for him right here. Once Rashidi Ellis started to get a little bit tired and kept on engaging, Roman Villa was able to walk him down literally with his hands down Literally with his hands down, walked through Rashidi Ellis's punches because he felt like, oh man, he can't knock me out. And he was able to make, you know, do a little onslaught. I believe like maybe round nine, V, I might have stole that one. I think he also knocked him down in one of the earlier rounds, like within the last four rounds, he might have knocked him down, but they did not give him that knockdown. Rashidi Ellis then took another round back, and I guess Rashidi Ellis felt the need to keep on fighting like uh, Meldrick Taylor versus Chavez, and it cost him. It's, this is pretty much the same thing all over again. Meldrick Taylor was whooping Ch Chavez's ass. Next thing you know, he kept trying to fight instead of coast and run away to victory, and he took an L. So basically what happened was the last round, Rashid Ellis was getting tired. He kept on trying to engage, which, I mean, yeah, you got heart and all that kind of stuff, but nobody cares at the end of the day. You're trying to win. He kept on, you know, fighting and engaging with Villa. Villa was able to knock him down one time. Then he was able to knock him down again. So at the end of the fight, I thought personally that Rashidi Ellis still did enough because he just he just outworked and outboxed Villa so easily and effectively for like at least eight or nine rounds that he should have won. There's no there's no way that he didn't win. Villa didn't even get three knockdowns. He got two within that last round, uh, the 12th round. So at the best, it should have been a draw. But they gave the fight to Villa. So now Villa's name is going to be out here making plays and making waves. Rashidi Ellis, that sucks. He was definitely disappointed. You can see it on his face. I think they, they could probably make that face a meme the way he was looking at the end. He looked so disappointed and so baffled by the decision. It was crazy. But uh, yeah, man, I guess, I guess this is a lesson in... If you don't have no power, you need to be coasting to victory. Moving, coasting, moving, coasting. It's okay to, to run away a little bit because all these folks that say you run away, they don't fight anyway, man. You touched them up real good in the, in the end. All that's going to be mattering is your record later on down the line. People came to watch Floyd Mayweather for 50 fights, and they said he was running and he was boring, but they came to watch him for 50 fights, and he's one of the highest paid. So who cares? 
Villa's not that good. I see him getting obliterated by anybody who's decent besides Ellis as time goes on. But hey, man, congrats to him at least for winning. You got that one off a of fluke. Robbery, next. Next up, we have Jerron Ennis versus Karin His name's Karen. That's all I got to say. He's from Ukraine. I guess all them billions that buys him and giving away to Ukraine allowed him to come over here and have the luxury to box. So anyway, starts off. The uh, Karen dude is moving really well. I, I was really surprised by his movement. I was like, oh, he's moving pretty good for a white guy. And, uh, you know, Jerry Ennis is being Jerry Ennis. You know, he's, uh, you know, he's going to be moving around pretty fluidly and throwing good punches and everything like that. But the guy was giving him issues because he was moving. But it got to a point where Karen was just doing too much. He was getting to the point where he was like Barry Sanders in there. And that's one of the worst kind of fights to have when you got a guy that you know you can touch, but he's moving too much. You know you're better than him, but he's moving way too much because he's pretty much prolonging the inevitable. You're going to lose, dog. Just sit there and fight. Karen wasn't really sitting there and fighting. He landed a couple punches, but for the most part, he was doing the Barry Sanders special, moving around, moving around. He's doing what Speedy Rashidi Ellis should have did in them last four rounds, but didn't do. He did that for the whole fight. Pretty boring the whole time. And he's chased him down. He landed a couple good shots, but he couldn't get him up out of there because of the Barry Sanders special. When you're moving like Barry Sanders, can't really nobody lock, lock down on you like that. Went the full distance. Jaron Ennis takes that one by decision. Next. Now we got the finale. Javante Davis versus Hector Luis Garcia. And it started off pretty uneventful. First round, they did next to nothing. It was just a filler round. Second round, Hector, I would probably say he took those rounds just due to the fact that him being... Pretty much the only one that was active. Javante was still kind of, you know, sitting there and analyzing him and downloading data and all that kind of stuff. But as time went on, the fight started to get a little bit more interesting. It was a little bit of back and forth between them, which I would say that Javante won that back and forth. I think Javante was doing good things like landing right hooks to the body, as you can see right here. He also landed that gazelle hook, the gazelle right hook. He also attempted several overhands. Some didn't land, but some landed at the end. And uh, that's pretty much what got him up out of there, man. He started hitting him pretty good at the end. There was also like a weird scuff on the sidelines. I don't know who it was between, but I saw the Gary Russell brothers in the shot. So I don't know if it was between them and somebody else. I don't know what happened, but they had to stop the, the time in round eight. But then after that, Javante hitting with, uh, you know, hitting with a, a right hook and a left hand, and I think another left hand, and that's pretty much what got him up out of there. They were saying that he couldn't answer the bell because his vision was failing him or something like that, and that is nothing to play with when you're out here in these Boston streets, man. You're really trying to live to fight another day. You can be out here like, I'm a tough guy. I'm so tough. But, hey, man, you'll, you'll be a, a tough idiot living in a trailer blind because, you know, you got a detached retina and you want to keep on fighting like a sucker. But, yeah, man, uh... You know, I, I think that it was a pretty good fight for the most part. It was kind of kind of uneventful at first, but I think it ended up pretty good because you don't know what could happen. I think Hector, Hector Luis Garcia is a decent fighter, and that's why Javante couldn't just go in there guns blazing and get him out of there quickly. Some some uh, Mexican dude was in the comments talking about some, yeah, it was just not a good performance, by the, like, but Hector Garcia is not, not sorry, so why am I going in guns blazing? I got to sit there and actually think about this guy I have to be methodical when I fight somebody decent. So what are you talking about? I don't understand these guys, man. You just can't do enough for everybody out here in these streets. No matter what you do, man, somebody's not going to like it. But uh, yeah, good fight to both guys, man. Hopefully Hector can come back and you know beat up on some of these other little dudes. But uh, hey, man, I guess he paid for that little lame Facebook post he put up talking about some, yeah. I I I I feel like a lawyer. I've got all my delinquents around me. I'm I having good clients. So you know what he said, because you know you had all the guys, the black American guys, dressing up, and then you had him dressed up in a suit, and you know you had a bunch of guys talking about some. Well, Kevin Samuels would say that you're not supposed to you're not supposed to be wearing street clothes and give up the jeans and sneakers. We're at a boxing event. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up, man. But anyway, man, Javante Davis got the victory. I'm glad he got the victory. I hope he goes and obliterates Ryan Garcia in extreme fashion. I want to see Ryan Garcia get knocked down. I want to see him get knocked out as well because I think he's weak. Well, I mean, he ain't that weak, really. But 
I just want to get see him get knocked. I don't know. It's just something about Ryan Garcia I don't I don't like. He seems like a Jake Paul type of dude, but he's not a Jake Paul type of dude. I don't know. But hey, how do you guys feel about the fights of the night? Let me know if you have any different opinions on each fight. I think that uh, going forward, Demetrius Andre versus David Benavidez or Caleb Plant will be a pretty interesting fight. Or even Charlo, I guess. Canelo seems to be running around. He's he's Pussy Juice Canelo pretty much at this point. He's running around fighting random dudes like Ryan David or something like that. I don't know what the hell his name is, but he's fighting some random. As far as uh, Rashidi Ellis and Roman Villa, Rashidi Ellis is going to have to go back to the drawing board and figure out a better game plan for the later rounds because his power is lacking. Roy Monvia, like I said earlier, once he gets in there with some some other competition, if he gets in there with like Jaron Enos, he's getting knocked out. I don't care. He's not that good. He doesn't have the movement. I mean, his power is only going to carry him so far. He doesn't have any type of anything. Um, but what is his name? Jaron Enos, I don't know who he's fighting next. Maybe it will be Via. You guys heard what I just said about that. If, if Speedy Ellis would have fought Jaron Ennis, he would have definitely took that L right there. So it's pretty pretty good that uh, Jer- uh, that Speedy Ellis didn't take the fight against Jaron Ennis. Last but not least, you know, we got Tank. We already know what I just said right there. Tank's on the way to the next Garcia, Ryan Garcia. I want to see him obliterate that Garcia and then ride off into the sunset. Hopefully, he doesn't let all these outside entities get at him because I know he has that still pending case with the hit and run incident you know you got some trash toxic women around you that's trying to destroy your your uh your lifestyle your livelihood and that's pretty annoying man when you have a woman like that that's so you know like a lot of women will let their emotions go to the point where they will just do anything in a point where their emotions are running high they'll do anything even if it makes no sense and it will really affect them bad towards the end. So hopefully he can get get out of her her way or she can get out of his out of his life, period. But that's it for the video right there, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it down in the comments below. If you watched up to this point, thanks for watching as usual. And I'll see you next time.